Hey yo YouTube, how are you doing? I've got a new video about an actor and a great a great actor and a great man, Matthew McConaughey, and I want to explain why um, this is important and why he inspires me and why I'm taking advice from what he's done over the last so many years as an actor and a person and what has got him to where he is through good and bad. Um, he's recently written a book called Green Lights um, taken from the journal that he's kept for over 35 years and having seen this I thought let me start to keep a journal um, but I'll go into details about what he said in the podcast and how it really resonated with me and probably a lot of you too so I'm going to roll the intro and then you'll see this very shortly So yeah, basically I got a few notes I made, um, things that I just remembered that he said that stood out and I mean, it's not a big obsession with Matthew McConaughey, yet yeah, Wolf of Wall Street, um, you know, Dallas Buyers Club, Days and Confused, Lincoln Lawyer, the list goes on, In what's it called, Interstellar, um, you know, so there's so many great movies um, over so many years that he's done. And of course they're great movies, but I really understood what he's like as a person from seeing his appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast. And um, yeah, so like I said, he recently wrote a book called Green Lights about all the things he's been through in his life, taken from his journal that he's kept from when he was a child to his road through getting to where he is today. You know, and there's a lot of bits that you may not know about him or, you know, may not have realised so I mean he did keep himself grounded and focused um, even when things weren't at their best um, but what he goes on to say is that you have to know how to deal with life when it is going well when it is going great because you don't want to trip up unnecessarily over yourself you know because a lot of people can self-sabotage when they're in a great position they can feel this imposter syndrome where they realise, I don't deserve this, why am I here? Let me mess this up and go back to how things were. Because as a human, change is the most difficult thing. And, you know, being in control of our lives is difficult, with surrounding things, certain things you can't control. But for most of the time, you can control how you approach a situation, which he's trying to say. I mean, things can go bad, especially when everything is going well you know I feel like the way he kept the journal it's almost similar to the way I kept a daily vlog yeah I didn't go into so much detail about certain personal uh, opinions and stuff but yeah in some ways it was therapeutic it took the stress off um, to voice an opinion what you're thinking sometimes and you know well his way of doing it was more pure because literally everything you're thinking over so many years of your life I mean but um, the difference is you can't th this is like 35 years I've been doing this for 3 years you know but I've started to keep a journal as, as a direct result of watching this podcast um, I mean I don't want to I'm not saying I'm here to write a book so I'm going to write a journal for the purpose of making a really interesting sounding book no, I'm just writing what I feel each day, getting it off my chest. Um, you know, because you got to, before you check your phone, your emails, you've got to do you. You've got to, you know, keep your frequency. And something like a journal can do that. I mean, he said it helps to find your frequency when you lose it. Or even when everything is a-okay, like I said earlier. You know, I mean, he says that every day you should just literally write something just between you and you, like, for yourself. Uh, but you know, not, not to impress anyone or give an opinion or get a conversation going, just between you and you, what you're feeling that day, anything. Or, you know, check in with yourself. Do a daily thing where you wake up, check in with how you're doing. 
you know, don't think about anyone else. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying being selfish, but consider your own feelings about what, you know, that you think you did well and what you think you don't, you haven't done so well, you know. Think about both the good and bad and think about what you did well and what you could do better, you know. In his case, he keeps a list of everything, you know, from the basic things. Um, maybe I'm not going to do that. But I do, at the end of the day, tick off, have a mental note and tick off the things I did well and the things I want to improve the next day. You know, and then Joe Rogan says about how, you know, when you have a shitty day, you don't really want to remember it. But maybe remembering that shitty day can make you avoid having them as much. You know, and nobody wants that. But those days are maybe difficult to go through in your head if you haven't done much well. But, you know, start by making your bed. It's the first thing. Tick that off your list, you know. Um, you know or make them even as well as that, you know, just at the end of the day before you go to the next day, make a mental note of what you will do the next day, what you plan to do to give you a focus, you know. This reduces stress because you're not fe no, not fearing like the unknown, like, God, tomorrow what am I going to do? Um, I mean, there can be days when you hit the pillow and just like, thank God that was over. And you're tired and there can be days when you're tired because you've been so productive and those are the days you want more often than not but some people overwork themselves this is what i'm thinking anyway overwork themselves out of guilt that they're not doing enough and i've done that for so many years when i was at uni um i'd overworked for like six seven hours in a day writing an essay when there was no point when you need time to think can't just write all at once and i would just rush it just get out of the way and it, that's not how you do it and when I'm sometimes when I'm making videos, I just go through the motions. And I want to actually think creative, creatively enough. And when you rush things, it's going to stunt your creativity for sure. I mean, I don't do what he doesn't write down lists of everything and mark it off. But if you if you do want to do that, it will make you feel like you're working towards something. Even like to just take one day at a time, baby steps. You know. And he attributes it to his upbringing, how his parents, you know, they, yeah, maybe they, they beat him when he was naughty or bad or misbehaved. It was physical punishment, but there was a time when that was accepted. And maybe you don't do that now, but maybe you don't agree with that either, but it's what made him who he is today. And the Italian, in Italian culture too, uh, people do get hit sometimes by their parents for doing bad things. But then, like in Matthew's case, you forget about it and you move on. And he does not regret one of those beatings he took because he deserved every one, he said. <laughs> and times change, yeah. But sometimes it works for some people. It doesn't work for it. Some people may not agree at all. That's fair enough. Everyone has their approach. As long as you come out better for it. You know, in his family, they had a rule. If you had an argument, they would make you figure it out before doing anything before going to school or going to bed you'd always figure it out uh, communicate with each other get the feelings off your chest say what you want to say and then move on and forget about it if you brought that back up you would get in trouble because bringing up the past is just negative and it can be dangerous too for your own feelings and others can't bring up yeah but you said this last week no he doesn't agree with that style because you've got to deal with the consequences and then move on and this gave him the value in consequences of whatever you do because there's value to the good and the bad and you learn from that and you know when you do a good thing there's consequences that are normally good not always do a bad thing consequences are bad you know most well almost every time but you know he says that in the past in his life where he has self-sabotaged a good situation, you know, um, because he has felt, like I said, that maybe he didn't deserve that. And people can feel that in life, that they don't deserve to be where they are, but you, you should, because you've worked to get there, unless you've cheated your way in, you know. But he, as a person, having started to listen to the audiobook of his book, um, he, um, 
You know, he did plan to be an actor. Went to, like, movie school, film school, I mean, and all this, but he just kind of fell into it. And So maybe there could have been a time when he felt that maybe he didn't fully deserve it and he'd been for a lot. And for him, like, his dad actually accepted that he was going to be an actor at the end. Um, his dad died before he became an actor. And the thing that he said that was interesting is that when his dad did pass away, he it opened his eyes to the world and gave him perspective, making him think, right, now I've got to be a man because there's no one to catch me when I fall. It's up to me now. And that just his opinion, just his way of looking at it. But um, So, yeah, that made him just crack on and be the actor we see today. You know, and he says that you should never create drama out of nothing because real difficult situations are on the horizon, you know? Like, don't make mountains out of molehills. There's little things that are really not that important that you're going to fuss over. Don't, you know, that's not the way to approach them because then when something really serious happens, that's what you've got to deal with. That's real drama worth taking notice of. But so it's inspiring to see the way he writes, the way he talks, his opinion on life, through the good and the bad, because he's had both. Don't you think he's an actor, he's wealthy, you know, he's lucky to have his good looks, which makes him, which helped him get in the door. Not everyone is that lucky um, with the money and the upbringing he had and the stable household. Well, um, his parents were divorced a few times. But it was quite a steady upbringing anyway. And, um, yeah, it's inspiring to see someone come out the other end of Hollywood still intact. And there's not many of them. And life will do that regardless of who you are, rich or poor, famous or not. You know, you've got to be... No, you've got to be yourself. That is it. You can't be anyone else. Because he said the guy, the person that you've got to get on with in life is yourself. Because that's the person you're always sharing your bed with. No matter who's next to you, it's you you've got to deal with. So just try and, you know, not self-sabotage yourself when you're in a good situation. Appreciate it, learn from it. And learn from the bad too. Because without the bad, there's not the good. And the way he spoke just resonated with me a lot. Um, you know, because Without adversity, you wouldn't appreciate the the good times, you know? And hopefully you can resonate with that in some way, you know? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this journal, keep writing it, and I'm going to look back at the difficult bits, and even the good bits, and you look back at the good times and you think, okay, that's how I felt then, got to have that same approach now, in the difficult times. And you look at how you treated the difficult times, Obviously, I've got notes of it, so I'm going to look at that and I'm going to realise what I did wrong in that time. It, maybe I was thinking in the wrong way, looking at the situation the wrong way. But, um, yeah. And, yeah, maybe care about others, of course. But you've got to think about yourself sometimes. And in the morning, just check in with you before your day starts, before you pick up your phone or read the news. Think about you first and then get on with the day, then consider everyone else. Um, well, if you're that way inclined anyway. But that is it for this video, guys. I want to thank you, and hopefully you've been inspired in some way by Matthew McConaughey. Um, yeah. I'm going to go and watch Dazed and Confused now. It's one of his movies I haven't seen. If I can find it anywhere. But yeah. Take it easy, guys. Peace.